You've probably heard about lens compression and that cameras with bigger sensors create a shallower depth of field. Yet, neither of those things are inherently true. Let me explain. Let's start with focal length. Focal length is the distance between the focusing element of the lens and the sensor. You probably already know that the longer the focal length, the tighter the field of view, or the more zoomed in the image will be. One term that gets thrown around a lot when it comes to telephoto lenses in particular is compression, which is the degree to which the image is flattened in the plane of the camera. So a lot of compression will make it seem like the foreground and background are much closer together than they really are. In the same way, wide lenses can make the background seem further away than it really is, so you can really mess with perspective. All of that is true, but it's not the lens that does it. The focal length only directly affects the field of view and the depth of field. What we all know as compression is actually just perspective distortion caused by the distance between the camera and the subject. Generally, we think of longer focal lengths to give more compression, but that's only because we have to step back further to get the same framing. And in doing so, the light is coming at us more parallel from a smaller area, therefore the image appears more flat. And the reason that the background gets bigger when you step back and zoom in is because you're zooming in. Here's an example. If you are five meters away from your subject and there is a mountain a kilometer away in the background and you step back five meters, you've doubled your distance from the subject. So you zoom from 35 to 70 millimeters, but you've only moved half of a percent further away from the mountain in the background, but still zoomed in twice as much. So the mountain is gonna be about twice as big while the subject is the same size in the frame. Here's another way to demonstrate this. If we take the same shot at 20 millimeters and 200 millimeters from the same distance, they're obviously gonna look very different, right? But if we take the 20 millimeter shot and crop it in to the same framing as the 200 millimeter ones, they're pretty much the same. Except of course, we've lost a lot of resolution due to cropping. This is pretty much the same with how different sensor sizes interact with focal length. Whenever we talk about focal lengths on a sensor that isn't full frame, we often also mention the full frame equivalent. This is because the size of the sensor determines the crop factor and we just use full frame as a standard because it is based on 35 millimeter film. A micro four thirds sensor is half the size of a full frame sensor. So it has a crop factor of two times. So whichever focal length you use will be equivalent to roughly double that on a full frame. So for example, this 25 millimeter lens on this Lumix G85 is about a 50 millimeter full frame equivalent. APS-C or Super 35 sensors are about halfway between full frame and micro four thirds. So it works out to be about a 1.5 times crop. There is a little bit of variation between brands, but it's generally around that 1.5 mark. So this means that a 24 millimeter lens on a Super 35 camera would be roughly a 36 millimeter full frame equivalent. To show you the difference, here's 20 millimeters and 50 millimeters on all three sensor sizes. I'm using the Lumix GD5 for micro four thirds, the Sony FX30 for Super 35, and the Sony A7 IV for full frame. All these shots are from the same distance, so the framing will obviously change. If we want to keep the framing the same, we'd have to change the distance between the camera and the subject, which like I mentioned before, is more important than a lot of people realize. It's generally known that you can get a shallow depth of field on larger sensor sizes, but that's kind of only indirectly due to the sensor size. Depth of field is affected by three factors. Aperture, obviously, focal length, and distance to the subject. Now, if we move from a Super 35 camera to a full frame camera with the same focal length, if we wanted to create the same frame, we'd have two options. Move closer to the subject, which would reduce the depth of field, or we could increase the focal length, which would also reduce the depth of field. So the whole full frame has better bokeh thing is sort of true, but it's not really to do with the sensor. The larger sensor just allows us to use a higher focal length or to move closer to the subject, creating more of that bokeh. So what does this all mean? Practically, not a whole lot. Using a longer focal length and stepping back will create more compression in your image and you will be able to get a shallower depth of field on a full frame camera versus a camera with a smaller sensor. It's just the reasoning behind why that happens that's different to what most people think. And I kind of just wanted to note out about cameras for a minute. So yeah, hopefully you learned something, even if it doesn't make that much of a practical difference and if you have any thoughts, 
let me know. If you want to know more, actually, Gerald Undone and Chris from Becky and Chris did a video a few years ago about this exact topic, and I thought it was pretty good. So go watch that, I'll leave it up here. If you don't want to watch that, go watch one of my other videos. And do all the other things before you leave. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.